grace to you, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. These are words that begin or end most of the books of the New Testament. Grace and peace. Grace that served unmerited, unearned, unconditional love of God and peace. A word that I believe we yearn for, long for in our lives, in our relationships, in the life that God has given us. And so I bring you words of grace and words of peace. Today we're celebrating the feast day of St. Francis. St. Francis was someone who was born with it all. He had what it took to be a successful person of his day and age, and yet he surrendered it all for God's call on his life. He gave up status and wealth and family and comfort, and doing so caused conflict with both his family and the church. It wasn't a message of peace, it wasn't a lack of conflict. I love the reading today from the prophet Jeremiah, where we hear what it is to know God. Jeremiah says, did not your father eat and drink and do justice and righteousness? Then it was well with him. He judged the cause of the poor and needy. Then it was well with him. Is not this to know me, says the Lord. It's not all joyful grace and peaceful peace, but it is to know and do justice and righteousness. When I found out I was preaching to, today on this feast day of St. Francis, the tune that I know well for the prayer of St. Francis started going in my head, and it's still going in my head. Make me a channel of your peace. This is a prayer attributed to St. Francis. He didn't actually write it, but it reflects who he was and who he is as a saint of the church. Make me a channel of your peace. I, I know that I, and I believe that we all, long for peace, and we pray for peace. And so I ask, what is peace? I think the word peace means different things for, for different people. But I came up with a number of definitions of peace. And one is the wonderful Hebrew word shalom. And shalom is translated as peace most sim simply, but it means so much more than peace. It means harmony and wholeness and completeness. It means welfare and tranquility. Those are also words that we use for healing. The word healing means wholeness and completeness. And so peace brings that sense of healing. Peace is also what I would call a kingdom of God word. This is what the kingdom of God is like. And Jesus talks over and over again about what is the kingdom of God like, and he brings in these parables. And I went through many of the parables and looked for an image of the lion and the lamb sitting at peace and knitting a shawl for themselves or something. And that's not what Jesus preached about. Jesus preached about how to bring this conflicted world into justice and righteousness, how to heal relationships, how to bring the kingdom of heaven into our lives here and now, and how we are the ones who get to do that. There's a famous saying that says, peace is not the absence of conflict. If you were to Google that statement, peace is not the absence of conflict, 
Many, many people have commented on that statement. And I have my three favorite comments from that. One is Gandhi said, peace is not the absence of conflict, but the ability to cope with it. How we deal with it, how we cope, how we interact with conflict. Martin Luther King Jr. said, peace is not the absence of conflict, but the existence of justice for all people. Boy, that brings conflict in and of itself, doesn't it? It's not the absence of conflict, but the existence of justice for all people. Nelson Mandela said, peace is not the absence of conflict, but peace is the creation of an environment where all can flourish, regardless of race, color, creed, gender, class, caste, or anything else. It is the creation of an environment where all can flourish. So that brings us back to this prayer attributed to St. Francis. Lord, make me a channel of your peace. In our prayer book, the prayer is written, Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. But the song that's been going over and over again in my head says, channel of your peace. And that prayer has some wonderful definitions of how we are channels and instruments of God's peace. Where there is conflict, let me bring peace. Where there is injury, let me bring pardon. Where there is the need for forgiveness, let me forgive. And we can learn from that prayer. When we're praying a prayer, by the way, it's not just a lot of nice words that we're saying. We're saying, God, help. Create this in me. And it's an opportunity to be open to God creating this in us. But I want to look at the word channel specifically. Make me a channel of your peace. And I think there are two aspects to this word at least. One of the aspects is make me a peace maker. Where I am, let me make peace. Not a peacekeeper. A peacekeeper is someone who doesn't like conflict and let me make sure that I keep smoothing the surface of any conflict that might be arising. It'll be all right. Setting boundaries or doing various things, but it is to keep the peace is to hope with all hope that there will be no conflict. Do we have conflict in our world? Nod your heads. We do. So we are called to be peacemakers, to be active, to be doing the work of kingdom living, to bring justice and righteousness, to bring an environment where all have the opportunity, no matter what their backgrounds, to be people of forgiveness and building relationships. I recently received a letter from someone who was distressed in his church environment because they had called a priest whom he didn't want as his priest. And what should he do about it? And I ended up with good advice, writing back and saying, how about building a relationship? with that priest that you think you don't like whom you've never met. How about praying for that person, being a peacemaker, building relationships? The second meaning for me of this word channel, make me a channel of your peace, is to form me as a peacemaker, to form each one of us as a peacemaker. And I I have the image of a river and a riverbed and the moving water with its sand and its grit and its stones and all those other things in the river 
forms the channel of the river and forms the unevenness in the direction it's going to go. And to pray, God, form me. I think that as a river is being formed, the rocks don't go, ouch, that didn't feel good. But I know that when God forms me, I often say, ouch, that doesn't feel good. But to be willing to be in those situations, in those conflicts, in those places where we are saying, ouch. Whether there's pain, whether we have to give up comfort, whether we have to give up family or money or social status, as Francis did, whatever we are called to do to be willing to be formed by the God of peace who calls us to be makers of peace. That means to seek the one who forms us, to be in a relationship with God and not to, to shrink back from that relationship, not to say, no, no, don't want to do that, God, mm -mm. but to keep seeking the formation. It might mean confession. I remember the day that I was listening to Bishop Rickle preach on social justice and racism, and he got up and said, hello, I am a racist. He confessed that, and that was the beginning of a new formation. I think um, some very high percentage of people, and I am in that high percentage of people, we are conflict avoiders. Oh, no. Please, Lord, when I pray for peace, I mean no conflict. I want that absence of conflict. But it's the conflict itself that forms us. And so to be willing to be in a conflicted situation, the conflict itself forms the channel. I had an experience of being the rector of a parish where there was conflict from, I think, the third day I arrived until I left almost five years later. And it was not a happy time. It was a very difficult time. I loved the people, and I loved living where I was living, and much was very good. But there was conflict over issues of theology and issues of justice, and I knew I was right, thank you very much. But I found out I wasn't always right. And that time formed me. It changed some of the rough places, the places in the channel that stopped things from flowing more smoothly. And I was worn down and formed by that conflict. I just had the experience, I thank Facebook today, but I had uh, people congratulate me on my anniversary of ordination. And people who could barely walk on the same sidewalk with me gave thanks for that time of being formed and being formed as peacemakers, both sides. We live in a time of lots and lots of opportunities to be formed, don't we? To be formed by relationships, to be channels of peace. We live in a time where we're dealing with COVID-19 and politics and debates and relationships that are both good and difficult. And God calls us like he called Francis to surrender to his formation, to be doers of justice and love and grace and righteousness. And finally, I can't forget today's gospel at all, because at times that riverbed that's being formed needs to find times of rest, to form eddies and pools of rest rather than always rushing on. 
And Jesus says to us in today's gospel, come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Find your rest and refreshment as you surrender to God's formation of us. One of the famous, favorite stories that I'm hearing during this pandemic is the rest and refreshment that people are getting from their pets, whom we're going to bless today. And a number of people sit uh, in Zoom meetings and at Compline and morning prayer with cats playing behind them, dogs on their laps but to seek those places of refreshment so that we can re-enter the work of being channels of God's peace. Amen.